my goal with this video series is not to tell you something that you already know. If I told you the obvious, then really what's the point of you watching the video? And what's the point of me recording this video and taking up hours and hours editing and re-editing and reshooting? Uh, but something that you already do know is that my last video was terrible. And I think it's because I'm trying to fit too much into six and a half minutes. So you noticed probably a lot of cutting and it sounded like I was talking super fast. And so this video is going to be a little bit slower and I'm going to kind of take things uh, and go a little bit more deeper on certain topics, which is great because I might run out of topics by June anyway. So um, going slower will allow me to kind of drag it out a little bit, but it'll also allow you to um, understand my thinking and how I look at the world of marketing and B2B and technology and analytics. So uh, thanks so much for watching and I appreciate you coming back. So today I'm going to talk about influencer marketing, specifically in the B2B and technology space. It's been something I've been doing over the last five to seven years. I did a lot of consumer influencer marketing back in the day, did some healthcare as well. And with B2B, I think it's a little bit more complex because it requires a significant amount of research before you actually activate a program. And unfortunately, the media kind of ignores B2B marketing. It's not sexy. It's not glamorous. Adweek doesn't write about it. Digiday doesn't write about it. But I, I think it's really important. I think it's probably more important than most tactics or, or kind of programs within kind of that B2B ecosystem. And the reason is, is it's, it's a way to really build trust and third party validation. Um, and it's also a way to reach audiences that most brands can't reach on their own. And so I'm going to talk about this over the next two or three videos and not just kind of tell you and theorize and, and give you my perspectives. Well, I'll give you that, but it's uh, going to be based on real world experience and I'll, I'll show you some programs that I've worked on in the past. So one of the first things that needs to get done, and this is probably obvious to many, is that you need to define a program. Document those KPIs, determine how you're going to work internally with marketing if you work in PR or with PR if you work in marketing. Uh, determine how it's going to be spread globally and how it's integrated across different markets and different platforms. It's also defining your methodology. You know, who are your influencers? How are you going to determine uh, which influencers you're going to pick and select and, and what budget you have and all that stuff? Um, I've seen situations where programs were launched overnight and, you know, marketers are kind of scratching their head wondering, well, why isn't this, you know, driving the results that I expect? And so driving that plan, creating a plan that is integrated um, across the organization as well as, you know, how you execute externally um, is, is key and critical before anything else happens. So part of your plan should also encompass how you actually define influence. And I typically use four data points that really help me validate whether or not an influencer is truly influential or it's someone who's just getting retweets for the sake of being retweeted. And those four data points are reach, relevance, resonance, and reference. And reach is pretty self-explanatory. It's how large is their community. It's the sum of all their followers on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, how many subscribers they have to an RSS feed. Um, the second is relevant. So how often are they talking about topics related to your business? Did they mention it six months ago, a year ago, or are they consistently talking about that all the time? And the third is resonance. And that simply means when the influencer is publishing content um, or writing an article, is their audience actually engaging with it? Are they liking it? Are they sharing it? Are they linking to it? Are they talking about it? And then the last one is reference. And this is typically a manual process. And it really involves validating the re the influencer and seeing whether or not they're being mentioned in the media. And those four data points are, are important because you can actually weight the different data points to based on what you feel is most important. If, if reach is important to you and relevance isn't, then you can kind of move the scales up and down and it'll help you really define the right influencers that are going to drive business impact for your program. Then you have to start the identification process, right? So then you need to decide, and hopefully this is part of your plan, how many influencers you're going to work with and start brainstorming, you know, what are the tactics, what's the execution and activation plan behind it. But even before all that happens, there's a significant amount of research that needs to get done. And let, let me explain why. If you believe that influencers are driving the conversation about a particular topic, then you need to study that topic. You need to study the words, the language, the vernacular, the context, the tone of that topic and begin to adopt that same context, that sa the same language and keywords into your own marketing for a variety of reasons. One is to be relevant to an audience, you have to speak the same language. If they're saying something one way and you're saying it another, there's no connection. 
if they're saying it one way and you're mimicking it in your own way and, and providing additional perspective, then all of a sudden there, there's a potential connection point. Also, the influencers that are driving the conversation also influence search behavior. As I've said before, if they're using certain terminology or buzzwords, what's going to happen is their audiences will start to use that in their search. And so if you can get ahead of that and again, predict or at least start mimicking some of the language that the influencers are using today or within this last 30 days and begin to build content that replicates that, then all of a sudden you are going to rank high in Google. And so this process takes anywhere between six to eight to 12 weeks because it's understanding not just what topics you want to go after, but it's the, the actual research behind it, right? It's, it's identifying the right influencers. It's mining their conversations over the course of time. And in some cases, it's also mining their conversations in real time. So that's another video in the future. So the next video, I'm going to show you some influencer analytics. And you know, as I've said before, this isn't about fluff. It's not about theory. It's not about speculation. These are things that I've done, and these are things I want to show you and share with you. And so I'm not perfect. And so if there's things that I've missed or things that I can improve on, then please let me know. I'm always open to feedback um, and, and having a conversation on Twitter or over the phone or whatever. So thank you again for, for joining today. And I appreciate you taking six and a half minutes out of your day. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.